Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how I made this envelope art. So I started with a printout from the Letter Writers Complete Resource, which is in the TPK catalog. I've got this um, cool pen and ink drawing of tulips, and I'm cutting those out with an X-Acto knife, which is a super useful tool if you want to make exact cuts that are difficult to make with scissors. So I got those cut out, positioned them on the envelope, and then I am using a glue stick and just really smoothing those down so they don't catch on a postal machine. And I'm using a gel pen here, a black gel pen, to make the blacks on those tulips a little more, um, just pack a little bit more of a punch. And then I'm making guidelines for my calligraphy. Nice artistic shot here of writing a J using Sumi ink, a Browse Extra Fine 66 nib, and an oblique pen. I like to stop at stroke junctures to reset. Nice downstroke. And then the video got blurry after this, so I moved ahead. And I am reinforcing my downstrokes here to make those thick, make those really stand out. The video sped up a little more here because I think you got the idea from watching me do the J. And then I realized at this point I didn't have room to write the recipient's last name in calligraphy, so I decided to use uh, a flourished block lettering style. So I've got block lettering and flourishes here, and I'm using my straight pen to write over the letters. Once the ink dried, I used the Extra Fine 66 nib to go over the flourishes, which is what we're seeing here. And then to tie those flourishes together with the calligraphy, I am reinforcing the downstrokes on those flourishes as well. And then I'm just waiting for the ink to dry. So while I'm doing that, you know, just waiting, I am using the pen to reinforce the tulips a bit more. And now the ink has dried, so erasing everything. And then I'm using white ink to add a bit of dimension to the lettering here. So I'm um, focusing on the left part of the strokes and then that ink has dried. So now I am planning out the second line of her address. And you can see that I'm working backwards to make sure that I can meet that right margin. And then I'm using calligraphy to write her city, state, and zip code, except for on the state, I wanted to do a little bit of hand lettering to tie this address line together with the first address line. And then I didn't have room for the zip code, so I added that on the last line. And just tracing over this pencil draft here, you can see that I'm not following the pencil draft exactly. I didn't love the way that that first D ended up looking. just going through i added a flourish to that a to meet the right margin and now this ink has dried so i'm erasing it and then using that white ink again to add dimension to the strokes not an exact rhyme or reason here but i am trying to get the left side of most of my strokes just to give this piece a nice 3d effect All right, that looks good. So now I've got my stamp collection here and I'm trying to figure out if I can make it to 58 cents with the denominations I've got. I cannot, so I'm having to use a modern stamp, forever stamp, and then two stamps that aren't worth very much just to fill up some space. And then I'm writing my return address in white and writing in her card here. I'm just using a white gel pen. That's what I like to use on black cardstock. There it is. And that's what the front of the card looks like. We'll just tuck that into the envelope here. It's a five by seven card in an A7 envelope. And then the back of the envelope has been moistened, so I'm just going to seal that. And voila.